All right, folks, welcome to another edition of Zintegra's Webinar Wednesdays. Uh, today's topic is a fun one. We got a great vendor on uh, by the name of Liquid, and we're going to be focusing on Microsoft WVD's best kept secret. So you're in for a good one today. So stay tuned. Um, I got some great guests on the phone. Uh, first, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Pete Downing. I'm the host and the C CMTO of Zentegra. Uh, and on the phone, I also have my friend Nico and Peter. So Nico, if you want to take a quick minute to introduce yourself. Yeah, of course. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Nico Zeek. Uh, I work at Liquid as an IT architect. Um, I have a background in Citrus consultancy, uh, AppV packaging, and of course, gradually went into the cloud and joined Liquid about two years ago. And today, uh, I can tell you a lot of stuff about our solution. All right, I'm looking forward to it. And then Peter, if you want to give yourself a quick intro, and you and I have a commonality, we both worked at Citrix at one point in our lives. Yeah, that's correct, Pete. So thanks for, thanks for the introduction. Um, indeed, um, I'm now in IT for a bit more than 20 years, so I'm getting old. Um, I started at Citrix, I spent some time at Novell and also at Emidio. Uh, and five years ago, I was lucky to uh, to found Liquid together with uh, two other founders. And yeah, we are really growing fast, especially the latest few months with the uh, working from home. Uh, it's bringing us a lot of new partners and customers, also the partnership with WVD, obviously. Uh, so yeah, we are really looking forward to showing guys what we can do and um, what we can bring to the table for your IT environment. So Nico uh, is going to uh, show the, this to you and um, I am with you Nico. Oh, Pete, do you want to still say something? Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna jump in. So th thanks for the intro guys and, and any questions you feel like you can jump in, Peter, always jump in. So all right, so let's uh, jump in for today's topic. Uh, before we do, uh, we are on GoToWebinar. Uh, the great thing about uh, GoToWebinar is the uh, Q&A dialog box. So if you have any questions at all, uh, please, please put them in the Q&A dialog. The great thing about that is they do get recorded and we have a record of all the questions. So if we can't get to your question for some reason, we always try to get an answer after the fact. Um, so we have a very simple agenda, as you guys know. So anybody who's returning, thank you. For any new folks on the line, thanks for coming and hopefully uh, you take a look at some of the future webinars we have going on uh, but we try to keep it simple we try to focus on demo and we try to focus on showing off great products so very simple agenda nothing too crazy uh if you haven't already please check out zentegra.com forward slash webinars we have a lot of great guests coming up in the next few months i literally finished the summer schedule over the weekend we have vendors like cisco uh, Rune, uh, RuneCast. I mean, we have a lot of great vendors coming up and a lot of great topics. Next week's topic is focused on lessons from the field. Uh, myself and a couple other panelists are going to talk about WVD and the things we've learned uh, deploying it. Uh, so that will be a fun webinar Wednesday. So definitely sign up for that one next week. Um, and by the way, one of the lessons I learned is I bumped into Liquid. So that's why they're on my webinar Wednesdays today. Uh, the other thing you want to check out is zentegra.com forward slash events. We do a lot of great events. Uh, one to shout out uh, is uh, my friends over at Liquidware. Uh, we're doing a Liquidware workshop tomorrow afternoon, one to three. You definitely want to check that out if you haven't registered yet. Uh, Randy Price, our SE, runs that session, and the folks from Liquidware jump on. And it's not the same as Liquid. Liquidware and Liquid work very nicely together. And then finally, uh, if you like podcasts, uh, definitely check out forward slash podcast on our site. Uh, Andy, our CEO and founder, does a great podcast called The Citrix Session, and we highlight different topics every week. I'm about to post a new one tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. And then finally, uh, you know, I launched a new series called Nuts, Bolts, and Beers, um, and I take technology and I try to install it and show how to configure it, and while we're doing it, we enjoy a beverage or two. And uh, last week, I highlighted IGIL, so you definitely want to keep an eye out for the schedule. I got MSI up, ugh, MSIX coming up and a couple other cool vendors. So keep an eye out for those. And as always, I like to include my audience. So let's have a little fun and ask some polling questions. And this helps Nico and I hit the topics in the content that we want to cover today. So a lot of Azure-focused questions. So uh, the first one is... Um, 
Uh, so I got a very simple one. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this one. It's called, uh, my enterprise is evaluating or using Azure infrastructure as a service. So the compute uh, today. And I'm just curious, uh, more of a curiosity question. Um, and again, Azure infrastructure as a service. So not Azure AD, not Azure BI or any of the other cool products that they do, just the infrastructure as a, as a service. So compute, uh, network, uh, you know, anything having to do with compute. So I'll give this a couple seconds. And I like to get at least 50% involvement here. So everybody who's not paying attention, again, all these are anonymous, other viewers can't see who's answering. So going once, last call going twice, and final call for answers. All right, so we got a very even spread today, pretty interesting. So for anybody that's still in the no bucket, um, definitely reach out, we can help you understand cloud computing why you would um consider cloud computing um and and then uh and you know and give you some food for thought on you know why azure is azure right uh and then i'll can highlight you know where and today we're going to talk a lot about azure and wbd um however there's a lot of value with uh wbd as well so we'll talk a lot about that all right so uh i'll hide this one and we're going to put up the next question so a wbd question my enterprise is considering uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. Now, for those who are on the web client, um, if you're on the web client, I find that if you full screen it, uh, it allows you to click on the answer. Sometimes it doesn't let you. It's kind of odd. I Unfortunately, I don't work for uh, Log Me In, so I can't fix the issue. Uh, I did submit it though last week. I got a friend over there that's pretty high up, and I let her know that there's an issue with polls in the web client but if you on the web client if you try to give it a little full screen that might let you answer the question so i apologize if you can't answer the poll so definitely uh whoop, i thought I, I launched it sorry uh so again my my enterprise is considering microsoft wvd so if you're considering it say hey we're considering it if you're piloting it say hey we're piloting it and hopefully i'm helping you pilot it um and if you're not sure what the heck wvd is say it we want to know you know we'll help you add, we'll help you understand a little more nico and i are pretty versed in uh, WVD. Um, so we'll give you guys a couple more seconds to answer. This is a fun question. So I've personally, as uh, Integra has done 20 WVD pilots just in the last two months with customers. Uh, and if you answer that you would like to pilot, let us know. We can help you find some funds. So yes, we can help you get free money to help you pilot WVD starting July 1st. So definitely reach out. So here's the answers. We got a lot of folks in the top tier today. So that's awesome. And we got a few folks in the bottom tier. So if it's not on your radar, definitely reach out. We can help you understand, you know, one, how does it fit with Citrix and or VMware? And two, you know, why you got to start looking at some type of cloud uh, scenario. All right, next question. And then we have one more after this one. Uh, are, you, are you using Office 365? So what type of deployment do you have today? Answer as best as you can. Um, if you're not familiar, just you know, take a swag here. Uh, exchange, uh, premise, hybrid, that's kind of the combination of on-prem and, and hybrid. Uh, if you're exchange online, just answer that. If you're in the deployment model, let us know. If it's not on radar and you think you wanna stay on-premise, let's talk. And then finally, if you're a Google Chrome Enterprise customer, good on you, awesome. No judgment here. This is a no judgment zone. We, I like Google actually, so. And if you are a Google customer, you definitely want to check out a really cool vendor called Neverware. So definitely check those folks out, especially if you're in education. All right, last call, going once, going twice, and three times. All right, so we got a lot of folks with Exchange Online, which is expected. Um, now that's good because if you're looking at WVD, guess what, Azure AD is a requirement. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that today because obviously when you plug in uh, to WBD, you got to be able to talk to Azure AD. So we'll, we'll highlight that a little bit today. All right, final question. And again, just a fun one. Um, and this plays into what Liquid can help us do. My enterprise currently uses an end user computing uh, product today. And if you use more than one, tick off the ones that you use. So if you use all three, tick them all off. If you use VMware for like VDI and Citrix for apps, tick off the first two. So definitely pick the ones that you you use. And if you're in the none bucket, because you're just you know a viewer today or a consultant, that's fine too. 
Um, but yeah, tick the ones that you you currently use today. So we're gonna let this uh, pan out. And again, uh, all answers are anonymous. People can't see your answers, so uh, don't worry. And if you saw the data I have, it's pretty cool. I have a lot of data. I've been doing these for almost two years now. All right, final call, and we're gonna share this as expected. We all all know that, hey, Citrix is king, right? Um, but I do see a lot of VMware Horizons, especially in the VDI sense. So, uh, and then, then I do actually have some customers that are RDS shops, um, and you know, and then we can talk about the other or none. Now, the reason why I asked this question is because Liquid can help with transitions, they can help with cutovers, and we'll talk a little bit about that today as well. So I'm excited. All right, so thank you everybody for taking time to answer my polls. That helps us understand our audience a little bit more. And let's forward on to social media, and then I'm gonna kick it over to Nico. So first off, if you're not following us on social media, definitely do. So that includes Liquid. So give Liquid a follow on LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever medium you follow. They put some great content up, a lot of cool videos. Definitely wanna give them a follow. Same goes for Zentegra. Head over to our YouTube channel. I just posted all the webinar Wednesdays from the last uh, two years up there last week. So you can go and if you're bored, you can go and watch some of the past ones. And I put the newer ones up in about a month time frame, So you, they tail about a month out. So definitely give our YouTube page a subscribe. All right, so with that, I'm gonna hand over the mic and the floor to my friend, Nico. Uh, he's coming to us live from the Netherlands today. I'm actually coming to you live from Charlotte, the Zentegra headquarters. So Nico, I'm gonna make you presenter and hand the mic and floor over to you, my friend. Well, thank you. So, um, thank you for the introduction. It was a, was a good start, a good way to start this, uh, this session. Um, well, uh, what I've prepared for today, first of all, uh, a couple of slides. Um, I've introduced myself already, so let's get that part. Um, then after that, I will go into a live demo. The slides are uh, separated in two parts. It's a general overview about what Liquid is doing, what we try to solve. And the other part is more focused on Microsoft uh, WVD and what we can actually do with MSIX and Microsoft App Attach. So the, uh, the last part of my session is going to be live. Um, it's a live introduction about what we do, what we can offer and how things can look like for your company. Um, but let's first introduce Liquid. Um, you heard already heard a lot about us. Um, it's not Liquidware, never. Uh, get those things mixed up. <laughs> hey, Nico, uh, really quick, uh, do, you, do you run your slides in slide mode or because I still see I your slide mode right now? Yeah, it's, it's just yeah, possible. There. Yeah. So there you go. All right, cool. Thank you. I think it's better. Yeah. So about Liquid. Liquid is a Dutch software vendor. We founded uh, a little over five years ago uh, with a focus on end user computing or delivering the ultimate workspace to your end users. And the ultimate workspace is uh, something for an end user as simple as it can get. I click on something, it will run. It doesn't matter where it is, what it should do, what it's able to run, and the administrator should be able to have full control over things. So the way Liquid was developed, they had the idea about workspace management. So the, the traditional solutions were way too heavy inside virtual desktops, inside virtual machines. So the first thing they did was create something lean and mean. So if you're gonna download our solution and, and actually our uh, agent, you're going to see it's just 1.2 megabytes. So it's really small, but really powerful. And I'm hoping to show you this today. After a small period of development, they looked into uh, the future of workspaces. So Microsoft has that great vision about everything is going to be online, software as a service. And that's why Microsoft is also saying WVD is the switch to the modern workspace. So it's going to be an in-between step in their vision. Although it's a great vision, it's not exactly how the real world is operating. So think of legacy, think of your applications. They're not server as a service yet, or in the near future might be, but not now. So Liquid is founded as a workspace management deployment solution, and then evolved into a modern workspace. And that gives us the power that we have today. So this is me. Um, now, already introduced myself, plus please follow us on LinkedIn uh, and on Twitter. Uh, I will make our marketing team very happy that we got some new followers, so please do so. And let's start with our vision. So, because everything starts with a vision, and the vision that we have is IT should be like water from the tap. 
What does that mean? Well, IT from water from the tap is if I open my hot water tap at home, hot water flows out. I'm currently sitting at home, so that's a good thing, I guess. Um, but if hot water flows out, I don't have to think about it. It's just hot and I can uh, regulate the temperature if I like, but there is no, nothing about I need to do about heating it. From an IT perspective, it's getting more complex. So looking at your iPhone, probably you'll download an app and it simply runs. Looking at corporate IT, these things are horrible in, in many situations. I need to log on. I need to log on multiple times. I need to deploy something. I got all those questions about how things should be, should be running. I'm not a tech guy. I just want it to run. So what we're trying to achieve is IT like water from the tap. I click on something and it just runs. No questions asked. Liquid will handle all the rest for you. So that's why we say we leave no app behind. So Liquid is all focused about applications and everything around those applications. So it's not just the app, it's everything that needs to be done to get that app running correctly. So Liquid is able to deploy and deliver every form of application. So think of more traditional applications like old school executables and MSIs, but also more modern applications like MSIX and AppVs and even scripting and whatever you want to do. And Liquid officially supports MSIX and Microsoft AppAttach. So keep that in mind. I think we're the first one worldwide to manage on-demand Microsoft AppAttach applications. And I will show this to you in a little video later. So this is our vision. This is how the world looks like from our perspective. So basically three clouds, the private, the public, and the personal cloud. So in the private cloud, usually when you introduce a new solution and you want to go to a modern workspace or a modern solution, the first thing you do is rip and replace. Replace your current IT solution. Um, that's not our vision. What we try to achieve is plug in, in your current solution. So that can be on-premise, an on-premise application, on-premise technical solution like Citrix or VMware or RDS, whatever you have available. We read out what's available on those systems, publish them into your new work workspace, and from that point on, you're good to go. You can move and migrate step-by-step step to your new platform without the user even noticing it. And if something fails, you can simply roll back with a blink of an eye. Then in the public cloud, that's getting very confusing for the end user because today I'm running a, a traditional application. Tomorrow is going to be a software as a service application. I need to go to a website and usually I get a different login. So Liquid will provide you with single sign-on. But the problem with software as a service applications is one thing. They require most likely a specific browser or, or even more uh, technical, a specific security setting or a plugin. Liquid can deploy and deliver those plugins seamlessly. So the user simply clicks on the SaaS application Liquid will authenticate you and, of course, will deploy the necessary settings inside your browsers. Liquid also integrates with WVD, for instance, cloud desktop solutions. So they can create a true hybrid environment with some parts that, that are not written off yet in your data center while migrating step by step to new modern workspace in the cloud or use it for burst purposes. So if your current resources run out on premise, you can spin up some machines in, in uh, the Microsoft Azure cloud, for instance, and get, uh, redirect your users seamlessly to that new point. And the last part is the personal cloud. So users uh, uh, do have a preference about they, uh, how they want to organize the workday. So usually in the office, I'm working on my laptop and at, during the night at home, I want to run from my iPad. The thing I want to have is that things just run. If it doesn't work the way I want it to work, I'll get another solution, the, the infamous shadow IT. So Liquid will serve on any platform and delivering a personal cloud, personal system to the end user by click and run, and the IT admin is able to, to redirect the users in a safe manner to their most suitable resource at that time. So what is Liquid Workspace? And this is going to be a more technical slide after this one, but this one will probably explain in high level what Liquid Workspace is. I know I will spam you with a lot of information today. Um, after this session, I will do, would like to do a follow-up with you if you have more questions, of course. But Liquid is, and I'll fast forward this a little bit, um, a lot. So first of all, we start off with smart icons. So smart icons are very important for us. So smart icons, everything uh, what Liquid can do happens behind those smart icons. So as a user, I just see that smart icon. I click on it and something will happen. So smart icon tell the story for an end user. I want to run my SAP client and I'm in my office. I click on SAP. And the most power I will probably will get is running SAP on my local laptop. But as soon as I move out of my office, I want to run SAP also because I will need to, I'm on the road, I need to work from home or the, uh, during the COVID or whatever you want to do. I click on that same SAP client again, but then I'm not connected to my data center yet. So Liquid can, can spin up a VPN session for you or with the same personal button without you seeing it, redirect you into a Citrix session. 
then you get a true hybrid view without the user seeing it or noting it, noticing it. Otherwise, with a smart icon, we're able to deploy anything. So we can update an application instantly, set up a plugin, or uh, update your Citrus receivers, your WVD clients, whatever you want us to do. To achieve that, Liquid does software delivery. Actually, dive in a little bit deeper, we do workspace management. So software delivery is not about just delivering the executable to the end user. It's about delivering the application, delivering the settings required for that application and everything around it. So think of drive mappings, uh, think of ODBC settings, whatever you want to do, deliver that for your end user just in time. So the user clicks on it, Liquid will deliver it on time, on purpose for your end user. Liquid has also a release and patch mechanism, and that's really powerful. So what most companies are struggling with is keeping those applications up to date. So you see a lot of recurring applications like Google Chrome, your Citrus receivers, your Java clients, and every time your packaging team needs to repackage those applications by hand. Liquid has a setup store, and that setup store is containing thousands of applications with a smart wizard. So we actually follow those websites 24 seven. If there's a new version, it's gonna be downloaded into our Liquid setup store, we screen that application for you and based up, uh, upon that screening we create a, a wizard for you a smart wizard so you can simply check what features you want to enable or disable for your end users and publish that application in one of our dtap stages so liquid has an integrated dtap staging system the, the most fun part of it you don't have to do any manual packaging work simply click select an application we will customize it on demand for you you're able to publish that application within minutes without packaging work. So you can focus on the business app, those complex apps. And with our DTAP system, you can publish it into your test environment and after that stage it into production and the user will get the application automatically. They click on it, Liquid will download the application. It doesn't matter if it's in a Citrix session or in a local device, it doesn't matter for us. So the applications or packages as we call them because a package can contain virtually anything. So it can also be a printer or whatever you wanna use can be placed in our catalog. And the catalog, a user can request an application and it can be followed up by a workflow. So a manager or a service desk can approve a specific application. What makes Liquid really powerful is filtering and context. So on every task within Liquid, so not just on the application, but also on the smart icons and on, on our deployments, you can set advanced filters. I want to, to this to happen then and there. So I want to launch a local application on a local device if I meet the requirements. In any other case, redirect me to a designated platform like Citrix. Or today, I'm running on Citrix, but I'm uh, ready to go to WVD. I click on the same icon with our filters and context, we re re redirect you to WVD. So that's a, real, a really powerful mechanism for the IT admins, and the user will not see or notice this. Liquid is also able to do single sign-on, and Liquid can be an identity provider for some uh, applications. So if a user goes to a software as a service application, the user wants to log on, it gets redirected into Liquid. We authenticate you against the Azure AD or the local AD or whatever you have at the moment. And based on the uh, actions, we re uh, do the single sign on into your software as a service application. And if ne needed, we will deploy the specific requirements for that software as a service application. So you get a true single sign on experience. But it doesn't stop there. If an application requires uh, a specific uh, browser, Liquid is able to launch that specific browser for you and transfer the, transfer the single sign-on token into the new browser. So you get an honest, true single sign-on experience. It goes further than any other solution yet on the market. Now looking at deployments, Liquid can also do full system deployments. We can't do bare metal deployments, but after uh, the operating system is there and our agent is installed, we're able to fully deploy machines. So that can be a laptop or a desktop, it can also be a Citrix golden image, it can be a Windows virtual desktop image, it can be an RDS image. And based on that, you can truly create a, a full flexible hybrid workspace solution that a user just simply sees a click and run and on the back end, all kinds of magic will happen. I'm gonna show you later to, uh, uh, some of the options available. In the top now, you see something we call connectors. So you see RDS, Windows virtual desktop. That's the way we can connect to those solutions, read out what's available, and publish them as smart icons in your workspace. So the user just clicks on it, Liquid will deploy the necessary uh, tooling to run those uh, services, like the Citrix receiver, the RDS client, the uh, remote app client for Windows Virtual Desktop, and Liquid will broker that session for you. We also do the deployment on the back end, so Liquid is going to be that end-to-end -end managing solution for you. If you don't like the front end we're uh, serving you with, so Liquid 
has his own web and launcher. So we have an agent and that agent is able to run in kiosk mode on your thin clients, for instance. Uh, we have our own HTML5 web client. It looks something like in the bottom left below. I'm going to show it live in a couple of minutes. If you don't like it, we can serve you with a variety of options. So we call it something like choose your own front end. So what we see a lot of customers these days are moving into Office 365, SharePoint Online, or any other social internet portal. Uh, think of ServiceNow or something. There's going to be their workspace. They, they share their information, chat with their teams, and do their sessions over there. So Liquid has created a Microsoft Teams app. What will happen? A user will log on into Microsoft Teams. The Liquid agent is already installed on that device. It will single sign on automatically into Liquid Workspace. So from one single pane of glass, the user gets its communication platform and all those enterprise apps and its catalog and run, can click and run any application. But as soon as the user will log on into Microsoft Teams, Liquid will also detect what's going on on the local device, what needs to be done on the local device instantaneously. So we will deploy and manage everything on the local device also. Liquid also has an API available to connect to any virtual any website. So it can be basically any portal you would like to run us in. So we are able to publish, control, and manage every device from a website. So it doesn't stop in virtual application, but also physical application. We can do the drive mappings. We can deploy physical applications, virtual application on a local device, or do it in a virtual environment. Then you get a true one-page stop for an end user, serving you with corporate information, serving you with documentation and Office 365 access, but also delivering all your enterprise apps into an online portal. And it's a, a combination aggregation of every application. We do have a SharePoint web part available if you like it. So it's coming out of the box. But we are also able to run just your native start menu. So if you're working in a more traditional way, we can also serve you in your start menu, your desktop or your toolbar. One doesn't rule out the other. So Liquid is all about fluent IT. So it's, it's more or less pick and match whatever you like. And if you want to go to a new modern portal, you're free to go. And Liquid serves you with an offline option. So if you have roaming uh, users want to work on an airplane, our agent is able to run an offline mode. So a couple of more slides on this general part. How can you deploy Liquid? Well, on-premises, full on-premises installation. In the cloud, we offer it as a software as a service solution and hybrid. So some parts on your local installation on-premise and some part in the cloud or whatever you want it to configure. So now a little bit more about Liquid and Microsoft WVD and MSIX. So we can do some cool stuff with WVD and with MSIX. Um, we are a Microsoft WVD partner, one of the few worldwide. And uh, we did this presentation for Microsoft a couple of weeks ago, and I took some slides from it. And today I will show you something we can do. Um, so why Liquid Workspace with WVD? We're the ultimate migration platform to Windows Virtual Desktop. Why is that? <clears throat> well, we, uh, uh, we migrate legacy and on-premise solutions transparently to the cloud. So if you're now currently running on-premise, whatever that may be, and you want to go to a workspace in the cloud, Liquid can do it transparent. So the user will get a new portal or get a new start menu or get an icon in the start menu. It will redirect you to the right resources. We support all Windows virtual desktop image versions, including the Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session. We can do the workspace management inside your Windows virtual desktop session, and we provide you with single sign-on into your Windows virtual desktop session. We can do the image deployment and we do the application management and delivery for Windows Virtual Desktop session. So we can deliver any form of application on the physical device, but also in your WVD session. So we work with our connector and I'm gonna show you in a little movie, our connector, and you can see exactly what it's doing. So I need to launch this one. I hope this one will work, yeah. So this is Liquid, this is our management platform. I will go to connectors and we have already connected to Microsoft WVD. And this is actually the legacy one. We already updated it into the new ARM version. So we connect to uh, WVD with our settings just to the control plane with a service account. We've set up a network credential set for you for single sign-on purposes and an install dependency, which will install a remote app client for you. This is what we take over from the WVD connectors or read out what information is available, how it should be published in Liquid. And here you can see how we publish applications. We are able to create snapshots. And then these applications are available. We've created packages based on those sessions, which are exactly the same as shown up in a remote desktop client in this case. So now they're published into our portal. 
if there is a new update on that application, Liquid will self-sync, auto-sync those applications into Liquid Workspace. So it's a one-time setup. If you publish something new with an external solution that's not coming from Liquid Workspace, Liquid will update the application by itself, publishing it to your end users. So Liquid Workspace solves the hybrid problem. This is one of the things we hear, hear quite a lot. We want to have a hybrid solution, something on-premise and something in the cloud. And in this case, make the migration from Citrix or VMware on-premise to Windows Virtual Desktop less painless. painless. Um, what we see a lot is that if you want to go from Citrix to WVD, you see a lot of issues. Um, the user's getting confused. I need to go from one point to the other, and Liquid can solve this. So we seamlessly move from local Citrix applications to WVD. And this is just a small demo, but we can show you how our filters and our smart icons can work. So I'll start the video, and it's probably going quite fast. So we go to a management platform. I'm going to show you some packages. So we've got prepared some packages, a Citrix WordPad application. So we're going to show you that it's launching Citrix WordPad using one of our connectors. So we connected in the same way as I showed you previously. Then we've got our WVD workpad already uh, automatically synced into Liquid Workspace, the same way as a connector as I showed previously. Then we've created a published application to your end users containing actually two tasks, basically or three tasks. Now launch local workpad, so it's optional launch it local, and then launch the Citrix workpad, depending on your conditions. So I click on the application, Liquid for broker in session, into Citrix. We do the single sign-on via the FAS, uh, the SAML authentication, and broker the session for you. And now they're starting the session, and it's full single sign-on into your Citrix environment. And we're going to show that to you that we're working in Citrix by showing you the Citrix security warning pop-up. As you can see, we're now working in a Citrix virtual environment. So now we want to move over to WVD, and we're going to add another an extra action, add an extra set, action set. WVD, and we're going to add the application, and it's going to be launch package. We're going to launch the package notepad, WordPad actually, I'm sorry. So we're going to select the WordPad application on WVD. And usually now we can work with filters. For this scenario, we simply disable the Citrix variant, but you normally you can work with filters, smart filters. What, when should I launch that application? We're going to stage it in our DTAP system into production, creating a new snapshot. So if you make a mistake, you can simply revert it again. Now going to the end user view again, a small refresh. So we don't have to re-authenticate. It's just a refresh. There's something new in this application. I click on it. And now we redirect you into Microsoft WVD. Also via single Sonon, installing the remote app client for you on demand and starting your application seamlessly. That's how easy it is with Liquid to create that cutover into WVD, completely seamless and transparent. And if you make a little mistake, of course, you can do the rollback. Yeah, and, and, and so I just want to kind of kind of stop right here really quickly and yeah. just like make a quick comment that this right here is the power, right? This is the power of Liquid. You know, this is what allows uh, you folks on the, on the phone to allow you to cut over from an option A to an option B very seamlessly and and having in you know a user experience that that is you know not intrusive right uh, or disruptive if you want so uh, so there was a great question that came in uh, Sridhar asked uh, how does it perform uh, when users are accessing WVD uh, VM from overseas and, and I'll take a swing at uh, answering this and you can keep me honest Nico since I gotta I gotta learn the product too right um, yeah. So the great thing about Liquid, uh, Sridhar, and, and, and everybody on the phone is you can install Liquid where you want, all right? And I personally, I have it running in my Azure tenant. Um, so, you know, you could put this, uh, you know, in your Azure tenant, you could put it in your core data center, uh, and then you can plug Liquid into any of the, the different regions that you're plugging into. And, and keep me honest here, Nico, you could even get pretty specific as around if I'm in the US, I'm going to connect to the US resource. If I'm in the UK, I'm going to connect to uh, the European resources. Is that is that a fair yeah. statement? Yeah, that's a really fair statement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then the only yeah. answer I can answer is I'm assuming you guys have a way to deploy this in a high availability as well. So I could put a one of your components in server uh, data center A and data center B, right? Exactly. Yeah. So Liquid okay. is able to uh, to uh, run in high availability mode, of course. 
Um, and Liquid uh, communicates over standard ports. So it doesn't matter where your Liquid server is, it communicates over port 443 to each other. So it does a self-sync of the content and it just has to have an internet connection and then the Liquid content server is accessible for everybody, for authenticated users, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, keep the questions coming. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I keep an eye on the Q&A and I throw on and keep Nico on his toes. So, so back yeah. to you, Nico. And keep, I, love, I love what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, great, great, great. Good to hear. Yeah, keep those questions coming. I'm happy to answer them. So some popular use cases and can't uh, run over them all, but we move legacy application to the modern workspace. So modern workspace is a free form definition, of course, which you want to do. Um, we reduce administrative time for release and patch and try to show you live in a couple of minutes. We do internet enhancements. So the internet is usually a more traditional, just sending information and we can make it interactive with liquid workspace. Um, and we do fast application packaging. Well, this one, of course, you can get the uh, presentation from us if you like. Um, I'm going to skip this one right now. So the USPs, a single pane of glass for the end user for all platforms, connectors, including Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, so it's not limited to Windows Virtual Desktop, Citrix, RDS, uh, et cetera, System Center, and all kinds of resources you want to access. So we try to aggregate what's already in place. And if it's good, if it's good, we don't have to phase it out. We try to work together with it instead of replacing it. But of course, we can replace a lot of those features and solutions. We do single sign only to Windows Virtual Desktop, Citrix, SaaS, and many others. We make seamless migration to Windows Virtual Desktop, but also other solutions possible. And with our setup store, we've got real power in our hands, creating easy packages. So it's all with silent switches, uh, configuration wizard for vendor MSIs, and it makes packaging so much better, so much faster. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo about how to repackage an application into an MSIX. And this is actually something we can do out of the box right now. So MSIX is coming there really soon with Microsoft. Microsoft is going to push it and they, they love it because MSIX is a base form of app attach. And actually in this video, <clears throat> we're going to show you how to repackage it. So we are in our setup commander now. That's a separate tool. We're going to connect to Liquid Workspace on what's new.liquid.com. On the right hand side, the application is already there, going to be shown up. On the left hand side, we already pre downloaded an MSI, Notepad. Looks simple, but it's hard because the standard repackaging wizard will fill over this from Microsoft. So, what we do, we're going to select some properties based upon our wizards. So, this is actually one of our smart wizards. You can simply enable, disable some of the features. And in this case, the auto updater is disabled because MSIX requires it to be disabled. Otherwise, the package will fail. We say, OK. What's going to keep going on next? Liquid's going to ask, where do you want to place a transform file? So, on that MSI, we now have created a transform file. And Liquid asks you, what kind of package output do you want from this? So, we got a working package. And now we say, oh, well, we want to have the MSIX package. We click on next. Liquid is going to ask some questions about the MSIX. And we're going to resize a little bit, gives me a little bit of time to talk. I like it. So where is the packaging tool? We're actually going to use the Microsoft repackaging tool. We're going to use this as input, and this is going to be the output. It's going to be MSIX, XML, MSI, and also VHD. So this is actually going also going to be an MSIX app attach application. So we click on start. And now Liquid, or our setup command from Liquid, is creating an MSIX package for you on demand using the Microsoft standard technology, so we're not doing anything fancy. We just input our intelligence into a package. We're creating this on the fly, fully automated. So nothing in between. So now we make MSIX packaging quite easy. So the application we've downloaded came from our setup store, hence the wizard you just saw. So that wizard is also coming from Liquid. So your MSIX package and VHD were created successfully. The MSIX and the Appetash application is done now. So we're now going to show you what happened. We've created an application into Liquid Workspace already. So we've created that add package and Liquid already, we've already created automatically the actions to deploy and run that application inside Liquid Workspace. So we've created a couple of tasks in Liquid Workspace to launch and deploy that application. So there it is, Notepad++, app attach. What we now basically can do is launch that application inside WVD as an official app attach application, but then on demand. So first, we're going to install the VHD, then we're going to stage the app. Usually, you've got to script this. Microsoft does not have a good way to do this. Then we're going to register the app per user, so it's going to be on demand instead of general scripting. 
then Notepad++ is going to be launched. And of course, we've created also the uninstall sequence. Basically, now Liquid can show you end-to-end -end MSIX packaging and uh, uh, app attached mounting on demand inside Windows Virtual Desktop. So you don't have to do any manual scripting. That makes life way more easy. And actually, we're the first ones to do it. Yeah. Um, look at that. I, I, I literally, and I'm not lying, I just fell off my chair because I, I mean, this, this, this feature is, it's mind blowing. It's awesome. Uh, this, this feature right here excites me. And you guys have been doing this packaging thing for how long? Yeah, for, for years, for years and yeah. years and years. So, uh, and I don't yeah. know if I'm, I'm allowed to say, but I know you guys also OEM this with a, a certain vendor as well. And I don't know if, you're, if we're allowed to say it, but we'll leave it at that. Um, and, and so you guys are, are very good at the whole packaging piece, but this MSIX app attached yeah. flow is, is phenomenal because not only have you simplified you know, how to build a package, but you've also simplified how to make it work with WBD. And I, I just want to make sure that that's clear to everybody on the phone is that, you know, this is just, this just took it and put it into a nice one, you know, well, nice clean wizard. And the net result of it is, is a very simple solution. So. Yeah. yeah. And you can say the names, but people uh, can also read it on our website. Uh, it's it's a, a VMware, by the way. They yep. OEM that from us. Um, there are other parties also, which we're not allowed to call out their names. But if you see something familiar, it's probably something we OEM to uh, our, to our partners. So uh, a lot of things are coming from us. Yeah. So it is um, my so last demo video. Before I go live, I've still got some, li a little bit of time left. <laughs> oh yeah, you got plenty of time. Don't worry, you got about 10 minutes, so yeah. no worries. So, so um, this is going to be how to launch an MSIX app attached application from a user perspective. First, we're gonna show you what we've did. What we created. So basically, we've got that app attached Notepad plus plus application. And keep in mind, if you're looking at the plus plus in Notepad, usually an MSIX repackage will fail on this. So we actually got some sort of a solution uh, around this. So these are the actions we tried to do, as you saw earlier. So we're going to install the package, and this is going to be the RDP client in this case for launching the session to an end user. So first, the end user clicks on the application. We install the uh, remote app client for the end user. If it's not there, so the users all, uh, uh, again, I feel like water from the tap. So here you see the app attached part that's going to be to, to happen on the back end. The user will see a little of this, but this is just for administrators. So it consists of two parts. On the front end, the user will click on a uh, remote app. On the back end, we stage the application for you on demand. So you see the task we're going to do, do, do the app attached, no plus plus v, VHD. It's quite a complex task because there are several steps included and this is also the power of liquid if you need more steps you can simply add more steps there are no limitations in the amount of steps you can add to these sequences and as you can see it contains install launch and uninstall sequences and we also have a distribute and repair application tasks so you can set up multiple tasks within one package and this is all coming from that one icon so this is what a smart icon is and you see the tab filters, you can set filters on specific uh, settings. So you can set, well, this will run only on specific platform for specific users in specific scenarios. You can filter and rule out anything you don't like at the moment. So IT like water from the tab. So you see the backend now, we're switching to the user front end right now. First of all, we're gonna show you that nothing is installed yet. So there's no remote app client installed. There is no Notepad++ on this machine. So I'm an end user, it's the first time I wanna click on this application. I'm gonna click on the app. First of all, Liquid is the re installing the remote app client. Now we're brokering you into the WVD session. And so we do the single sign on. The remote app client is already installed. And next, now you're gonna see a little screen installing Notepad++, we're re registering the app. This is how fast the mounting of the application went. So the application was mounted live in this video, no, it was not live in this video, but it was in real time. So this is how we can support your end-to-end -end. user simply clicks on it and we will manage everything on the back end so without further so, ado yeah, yeah. so quick, quick question and as you jump into your live demo maybe you can answer this but a good question came in uh what devices is liquid technically supported on today um and can you kind of highlight that as you go through the live demo so yeah so we officially support all windows uh, machines and we can do uh, remoting stuff on uh, Macs and we can do it on iOS stuff and etc cetera, etc cetera, and SaaS applications but physical installers that you need to be installing on endpoints Windows so that's actually but as you can see I'm working now uh, on a MacBook 
um, and I, it runs actually, actually just great on a MacBook. I'm doing this today in a, in a parallels machine for the Windows stuff, but we can do and, and show this also on a MacBook, uh, how it will work. I'll show you later how things can work on a, on a MacBook um, with some examples. I'm going to show you some live, uh, uh, some, some smart icons, how they will work. So actually, this is Liquid. Um, I already been single sign on with Azure AD into my Liquid session. So to show you that, here's my management and I go to my identity sources and this is my Azure AD. And we can simply add multiple identity sources into one portal. So it can be LDAP, so e-directory, any LDAP speaking system. So also traditional AD or ADFS scenarios and Azure AD, and we can combine multiple ADs into one portal. So we actually got two, our local database authentication and Azure AD. I've been single sign on into Azure AD. So the little circle you just saw was a full workspace refresh. So we actually refresh the workspace instantaneously, reset all the security parameters, and we re-adapted the smart icons to my PID. So every icon I see right here right now, I'm able to launch, except for the publisher and Skype, because they are grayed out and something is wrong with this solution. I can't see why, but I'm a manager and I tell you why, because it's looking for an installed uh, Skype version. It's not on my machine. So Liquid already detected it's not there. There are no install tasks. You simply can't run this application in this point of time. All the other applications, I can. But first, let's start on the left-hand side. You see some filters. So here you see some new apps, favorite apps. I, I can assign uh, apps as favorite myself, so I can do market as favorite. And you see right away, Access is now a favorite app. I can add post personal apps, so to a URL or local application that I would like to have in my dashboard. I can create some auto launch apps. So when I log on, I want to auto launch some applications like broker right into, into my Citrix session or start a, a specific application that I work on on an everyday to day base, et cetera. Here you see some tags. So these are tags that an administrator can create to filter out some of the applications. So this is like Office 365. I can aggregate a simple overview for Office 365 apps. So if you have lots of apps, you can simply just filter it out. It's all easy for an end user. In my contact screen, I can see my colleagues and I can click on my colleagues and I'm looking at, uh, where am I? Where is the handsome fella? Uh, this is me. This handsome fella is me. So you see where I'm located. You see my mobile phone number. You see my email address. I can drop myself an email. I can manage the user if I, because I'm a system administrator and I can do remote control. It's bring your own remote control protocol that Liquid can work with smart variables to seamlessly launch a remote control session into the user session. I can click on it, it says no remote control package available, but we can detect the device and I can simply connect to um, the specific endpoint to do the remote control. It's really easy for a service desk employee. In the catalog, I see the applications are already waiting for me. I didn't request them yet. For this demo, there's no work, uh, workflow for approval, but if there is going to be approval, you can see pending approvals, and you can see my waiting approvals, which I've rejected already. For now, I want to have paint. I do the reader classic, so I click on reader classic and say, get it. And it's already there. Refresh it. It's already there on my workspace. Easy as that. Liquid has also been managed from the same portal. So for the IT administrators, I'm sorry to say, it's eat your own dog food. Um, for now, workspace. I click on my 7-zip and I'm an end user and I expect my application to run. It's of course an easy demo scenario. It's small, it's fast. But what just happened? Liquid followed the protocol for a smart icon and I'm showing you right now. Oops, I need to do the right click. Uh, I will go to manage something with my greasy fingers, I guess, into 7-zip. We followed a procedure of actions. So what is actually did? I'm an end user. I really don't understand where I'm coming from, what I'm doing, what kind of device I'm working from. I just need the app. I don't even know if it's installed, yes or no. So I click on this application and Liquid will just figure out is the application already installed? If not, we're going to do the install sequence. It's configured to do the installation once per device. So Liquid is keeping track on which applications are installed on which device. Of course, you can report on it. So. What is doing? It's trying to install the uh, MSI and the X68 for 32-bit machine with a filter on it. So here we're going to use the first layer of filters. If the platform architecture is 32-bit, the other one is 64, again, with a filter. The actual result is if you're coming from Windows device and you're allowed to run this application because there are no extra filters, Liquid will the, install the right application on the right device for the end user. I don't have to think about it anymore. Next, installation was successful in my case. Liquid will go to the launch sequence. 
So you see some a couple of tasks in the launch sequence. So first, Liquid starts up down with this one. It tried to start a process and it tried to launch a physical 7-zip on my local endpoint. But it will only do it when the application is there and if I'm external. This is a location filter I've created for this demo. And because I'm working from home, it's external today. Otherwise, my application would launch right now. So here you can see you can contextualize your running of your applications. If this would fail, Liquid would go to the next task, start your remote RDP session. So you can imagine this can also, the first one can also be a Citrix session, the other one can be a WVD session. You can combine all sorts of tasks over and over and over again. The final result for me as an end user is click and run. I click on the application and it will be there. Looking at a little more, uh, more advanced scenario, I have here my Excel and this will actually go to Excel online because I didn't have Excel installed on my local device, but a liquid single sign on me into Office 365. What happened on the back end was actually uh, going to manage, was liquid was also working a workflow. And to be honest, I'm doing this all live. So you see how fast things are going. It's all live and I don't fake anything about this. So Liquid did a workflow. There are no installed tasks. So Liquid was not able to install my application, but still able to run. Liquid was looking for Excel 2016, native on my endpoint, but only for platform if it's Windows. It wasn't, it wasn't there. So it Liquid tried to run Excel on my Apple device natively. So run the native Apple uh, Excel on my iOS device with a filter only if you have an iOS device. Then, Old school uh, service 32 bit, and even you can be a migration scenario, try to run the previous versions of Excel, and finally went to Excel online. So we do the single sign on. We can also say we want to run it in an alternative browser and we want to do a shared authentication session, whatever you want us to do. Makes it easy. And, and let's pause here really quick because this right here is very powerful too. So this right here is what highlights the ability to do migrations, whether you're doing simple migration of office upgrades or a cutover migration from, let's say, an EUC vendor to WVD, WVD right? Um, so you could do a if this, then that almost, I know that's kind of making it generic. Um, and then worst case scenario, you could say if on Windows, install, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. This uh, is so really, can, really powerful. Yeah. Sure. I'll show you some of the actions we have available right out of the box. Connect the printer. And with the connected printer, we can also do it and bring your own certain, bring your own device scenarios. So usually when you fire up a printer connecting connection, it tries to impersonate your local logged on session. We can add a, a SSO template reading out the current logged on uh, credential set, and we'll use the liquid uh, credentials to mount that printer, even on a bring your own device that's not co connected to the domain. We can still install any file, create anything, or edit, for instance, a specific file, and we can add an action and we place a simple string into a specific scenario. For instance, I'm on location A now, uh, of customer location A. I need to uh, connect to a database that's going to be in my data center in my customer location. So that's the WVD part you probably also can do. I'm now in Europe, I want to connect to WVD part in Europe. And if I move to the States, I want to connect to WVD in the States. So we can replace an action string live while clicking on it, setting a filter on the specific task to achieve what we want. When do we want this to happen? So I want this action to be happened when my context, when I am at customer A. And I can add an extra filter, but only if my uh, uh, FQDN contains, uh, uh, contains liquid. So it's, it needs to be corporate domain joint device rinse, otherwise I can't run it. So you can create ultimate combinations of filters and actions just to get IT like water from the tap for the end user an IT admin, you have full control over what will happen when and where, and we are able to install and deploy anything. So we've got so much task we can do, modify group memberships, prompt the user to allow us to deploy something, do an opt-in scenario. So I can create a message, opt-in for something, and I can say yes or no. On no, we can skip the task, action set, or skip the package. It's up to you what you can do with it. If a user allows it, we're able to install and deploy it. And you can say, oh, you allowed it, so we can deploy it, right? So you can make it extremely flexible. Well, I'm gonna show you one more application because we're talking about WVD a lot. I click on this one. I'm doing it live right now, starting a WVD app, doing the single sign-on. We're brokering Microsoft Paint right now, configuring my session, and probably should be popping up any sick now. Um, yeah, there it is. So I'm in a remote desktop environment right now, brokered live WVD application. 
So this was the connector we were talking about. Um, so this is a connector and you see here connectors to another liquid environment. Uh, show my screen. So something comes down. Yeah, we're in connectors. So you see uh, we're connected to another liquid workspace environment. So liquid is able to run in a multi-tenant scenario. Yep. So it's also great for MSPs. Um, we can connect to our setup store, which I will show you in one minute. And then our WVD environment. So we actually connect it to uh, all resources. We are able to also connect to the ARM resources, which Microsoft didn't of publicly official released yet. So it's still in preview. We sync the applications and you see the application we've got from WVD. You can simply add connectors to a variety of systems like Citrix, System Center, RDS, whatever you want it to be to aggregate your applications and redirect your task uh, workers into RDS and your power workers into your Citrix session, saving you on licensing. So now I'm going to show you one more package on what we can do with Setup Store. And this is just for high over. We can go much deeper in the next session. But for now, I'm going to do the packaging of Google Chrome just live. And oh, I need to type it because I'm browsing our setup store right now. And you see right, it's searching. So there's Google Chrome updated, I think, yesterday. <clears throat> Two days ago was my birthday, by the way. So happy me. Great package. So Google Chrome 64 bit. I'm going to update the existing package. And I want to deploy this to my test users. Next. You see some information about the vendor, the release notes, the info, and knowledge base article Liquid has written. What happened on the back end? Liquid monitors Google 24 7. We've downloaded the package into our system and screened it for vulnerabilities. So, hashing, CV numbers, antivirus. If there's something peculiar about this application, you see here a big red bar. What's wrong? You can decide whether or not I want to deploy this. Next, here is the power of Liquid. You see, here is a template. I can simply select what I want to enable and disable for this package. We already pre-checked some of the uh, checkboxes because that's what we see being used most. I can fill in my homepage, liquid.com, some preference I want to import it from my previous versions. And I think, well, my package should run like this. Next, next, for who this application? Well, let's make it for me, this fellow right here, test, and I say confirm, next, finish. So my packaging is done. Now Liquid is going to download the MSI. It's going to create, uh, uh, based on your answer file, an MST file. It's going to create the Liquid installation deployment tasks for you. And after this, your complete packaging is done. It's already available for your end users. This is how fast packaging can be with Liquid Workspace. And this can be deployed right now into a Citrix image for deployment, can deploy it on a local endpoint. It's up to you. You just set the filters and the states where it needs to be. Well, it takes a little while to download this because, yeah, okay, it's a big package, but it's already done. We've created these actions for you. Install files, so we download the MSI. We download the custom files to the package stem there. There's actually your transform file. We've set up an uh, unattended installation sequence for you uh, with a variable to launch the MSI, silent parameters, and a log file, and we apply the transform file for you. And to be completely exact, we also clean up our own mess. So we delete a directory. That's actually the pack, package stem there. So we clean up our own mess again. So this can be deployed in our deployments uh, and much more. So one thing I need to, uh, to show you is what we can do with uh, context. So we have a context called Citrix servers. When I'm a Citrix server for this demo with a filter, if platform a server, you can add as many filters as you would like. You can script it if you like it then your device will be added to this. Based on that, we can add variables. So we're now pointing to a specific print server, pointing to a specific package temp location, to a specific identity source, even for authentication, if you like. We can apply an access policy. So if I'm running from location A, I'm an admin. For location B, I'm not longer an admin. We can transform the way Liquid will look and behave. So give a different look and feel when I'm in a Citrix workspace. You, uh, change uh, user settings, change the logon screen, Apply extra packages based on, upon your decisions you can make. So in this case, even though you're not authenticated to use 7-zip as an end user, if you meet the requirements in the context, you're still allowed to use that application. For instance, in, uh, in a local government, you see a lot of label printers if you go to the, some specific machines. So if I log on to that specific machine, I get that specific label printer connected to that machine. Otherwise, I don't have access to it. I don't see it. And last. Now we've connected our Citrix service to the Citrix golden image. So when we fire up a Citrix server, 
uh, that's not been deployed yet, Liquid will automatically deploy the Surface Golden Image in this case. Now, let's look at the front end. This is our front end. Pretty awesome. If you don't like it, it's my screen. Hey, Nico, so, uh, so uh, yeah, we're coming to the top of the hour, and you got a lot of great stuff here. So yeah. if you don't mind, I, we're gonna have, we're gonna have to wrap. But what I'll do yeah. is we'll commit to the audience that we probably are gonna do a second session, probably late summer. Uh, so keep yeah. an eye out for that. And uh, and I definitely wanna, you know, I uh, definitely wanna make sure that uh, we answer any and all questions. So if you have any final questions, you can get them in the in the queue. And we'll we'll definitely keep an eye out uh, for for the questions, and we'll try to follow up with each and every uh, customer. But if you're if you want to know more, definitely follow up my, with myself uh, and Zentegra, uh, because the good news is is Zentegra is a partner now of Liquid, and we uh, you know now resell Liquid as part of our stack, uh, and we can also um, uh, you know we also help you know de demo, deploy, uh, et cetera. So that's part of the the partnership. Um, and then we can help you understand how Liquid uh, fits into uh, the various solutions that you might be interacting with today. So one of the things we didn't talk about, which I'd love to do a follow-up session on, is how does Liquid work with some of your complementary products out in the field? So you mentioned Citrix as an example, um, and, and you know where it could, where it complements, but where it could also compete. I mean, it's a little you know tough question there, right? Um, and so yes, we do resell Liquid. So uh, and and if you have any questions further beyond today, definitely reach out. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of great stuff that Liquid does, but also uh, we also are an MSP. And one of the things I'm looking at doing is potentially building an offering with Liquid uh, on top of WVD. So keep an eye out for that um, as part of our what's called Zentegra Connect, which is our MSP uh, division. Um, and so definitely keep an eye out for that. And one of the final pieces that I'm going to throw out here is that we do what's called free micro assessments. So we have a VMware micro assessment and a Citrix micro assessment. So if you're interested in you know, understanding where and if this could fit in, that would be a good exercise. And you'll see an email talking about this post session. So definitely keep an eye out for that because that's, again, that's a free micro assessment. It's about a four hour commit. That will help you understand where Liquid could fit in to your strategy moving forward. Uh, and then final, final question. So if you're, are you hiring? And if you're a company that's hiring, guess what? We have a staffing division. We can help you staff uh, folks throughout your uh, different uh, IT organizations. Uh, and we have a great staffing team here at Zentegra as well. So not only are we a value-added reseller, but we're also a staffing uh, company and do uh, staffing uh, from everything from temp to hire, staff augmentation, and full-time headcount. Um, so again, uh, you know, final call for questions. So if you have a question, get it into the chat box so we can track it. Um, but if you want to dig deeper, definitely reach out and reply. Myself, and or Nico or both of us can get on the phone call post session and we can take you through deeper what what we just showed today because as you can see liquid does a lot and I'm very excited because I think it's a great solution especially if you're looking at uh, WVD as a migration strategy uh, to get into uh, a cloud-based scenario um, and again definitely check out our webinar page uh, we got a great listing of uh, webinars coming up over the next few weeks I try to feature different events every week, our different vendors every week, different topics. Next week is the kind of the battle scars of uh, deploying WVD. We'll talk about lessons learned. I got a great panel next week, so look for that. So final call for uh, questions. And as I let people think, I'm going to put our contact information up and I'll just let Nico, any closing thoughts for yourself today? Yeah, well, I, uh, I just hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you've got any questions, uh, as you know, I talk uh, uh, much, I talk easy, so please feel free to reach out, uh, and I'm happy to answer all your questions. Thanks for joining today, and yeah, thanks, and, Pete, uh, for hosting this great yeah. event. Yeah, Nico, thanks for jumping on today, and, uh, you know, as always, great demo. I love, I love, I learn something new every time I jump on a demo with you, so I, I look forward to uh, working tighter with uh, yourself and uh, Peter and the team over at Liquid. Uh, so with that, I'm going to say thank you, everybody, for joining us. I uh, hope to see you guys next week on our next edition of Webinar Wednesdays. And I'm going to say have a great day and have a great rest of your weeks.